Hello again. Now we get to look at our lab called Star Power. Power indeed. We're going to see how powerful and flexible Python is here. First, let's take a look at the analyze.py module. On line 5, we have our definition for analyze, where one object and another object come in, and we're going to get the total of these two. So it better be that you can add them together. Interesting is that you must have a sequence go into sum. So we had to make a tuple of one and other. And then we get the average. Now then, we're going to return the minimum of one another. And notice here that we did not have to make a tuple out of them. We could put in any number of arguments and it'll find the smallest as long as there's some definition for less than. Max, we didn't have to, but we did make a tuple. We could have made a tuple in min. Both min and max are very flexible that way. And then we're going to return one, two, three, four objects. You'll notice that sum, min, and max are purple. They're built-in functions. Good to realize. We also have a print function with a capital P, meaning that it's my function. I've written it. It takes in four numbers, and it gives a report of them. Let's look at our main. On line 17, we're calling analyze with 1 and 8 are our arguments. We get back that minimum number, the max, the total, and the average. Four different values come back, and those four different values get assigned into the four different identifiers. That's one way to do it. And then I do that print so we can see it, and we see it worked perfectly. Now we're going to do it again, but this time we're going to collect the answer from analyze all into one identifier, answer. But that has within it four different values, so we can put it on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and on the left-hand side we have those four identifiers, and the answer, which is really a tuple, gets unwrapped, so each of the values gets the assignment into the identifier positionally. That's good. And we see that that worked just right. Now then, we will have our first glimpse of some star power. In our next call in our main, we have our tuple here without parens. I wouldn't blame you if you complained. And I'm putting an asterisk in front of that tuple. Or I could do that in front of any iterator. We'll see. So the asterisk then unwraps each of the values that are in that tuple and puts it individually and positionally into the call. So the 50 goes into the 1, and the other gathers up the 20. We get our answers back. Remember, that's a tuple. So now I can put an asterisk in front of my answers, and once again, I never even get to see them, but they get unwrapped in order into that print. So an asterisk in a function call, it goes in front of an iterable, a tuple or a list, etc. And then that tuple or list, etc., gets unwrapped into the arguments. Very powerful. We have colors, which is a nice tuple of colors. If I call a function and I say asterisk colors, it's exactly as if I call the function and put in the individual elements of that tuple, just like that. Here we'll demonstrate it with some code. Print colors takes in three colors, and it prints them. Now here in our main, I have a tuple that doesn't have round brackets on it. It's still a tuple, doesn't matter. And if I do asterisk colors, plain, I get red, orange, yellow. Here I am doing it with parens. I get the very same thing. 
Here I'm doing it with square brackets, a list. We'll learn all about them. If I do it with a list, I get the very same thing. But look at this. I am doing it with a string. You remember that you can put a string into a for loop and it passes you back one character at a time. The asterisk works like a for loop. It puts one character at a time into the colors. So one color is the H. The asterisk then is like for looping through this object and putting each of the elements into the argument list. Also true and also amazingly useful is that in my function definition line itself, I can put an asterisk. Now that asterisk, very smart, because now here I'm going to call that function with three arguments going in, and it's that asterisk will gather up all those arguments into a tuple. It's as if I had args equals red, orange, yellow. In fact, I do. That's what I have inside my function. Let's see what this gives us. Here I have my print favorite things, asterisk things. So I can have any number of arguments come in on that. Here are my things. We got four of them. If I put asterisk my things, then four, those four things go here as if they were separate arguments, but then because there's the asterisk there, it gathers them up to a tuple called things. So I can for loop through them and print each one out. One point you don't want to miss here is that an asterisk in a call unwraps the items that are in that iterator, and an asterisk in the definition gathers all the extra stuff together. So these two things work together. They're kind of inverses of each other, and you'll see that this facility is very well used in Python. The asterisk can also appear where there is no function call or function definition. If I have five items, we know I could put them into one identifier, or I could put them into five identifiers, but I can also put them into any number of identifiers if one of the identifiers has an asterisk in it. These are the last two identifiers, so they will gather each of them, the four and the five, and all the leftovers go into the asterisk identifier. Here we see the same thing except for the Y. The middle identifier has the asterisk. Therefore, the X gets filled in with the first one and the Z with the last one and all the rest go into the Y. And then the other one, of course, is that the Z has the asterisk. Then the first two items go into the first two identifiers and then the Z is the list of the other three. Here's an interesting little artifact of all this. Here I have a, a tuple, some yummy things. I can then put each of those things in, I, in an identifier. And I print them out, that's right. Now then, I am saying instead of bottom, middle, top, here is bottom, middle, top. So realize that's going to be ice cream, whipped cream, and cherry. And that the right side of the identifier gets resolved before we go to the left side. So the ice cream from the right side goes into the middle. And the whipped cream goes into the top. And the cherry is on bottom. I did a big swap. And I did a big swap without keeping an intermediary like you had to in other languages. Cool, huh? Okay, you're on for some exercises, exercises using the star power of the asterisk. See you when